Well, Jerry Rowan, you know, Kevin, what makes this interesting, matchmaker Eric Rodgers said to me last night, he said, these are two cogs in the wheel. These are guys that are basically opponents. Somebody's going to come out with the win. Both guys are coming in here tonight for the first time in a long time, knowing that they can win. And uh, it's an interesting situation, but these are these are guys, Brad Rohn coming in 6 and 15, two draws, lost his last two fights. Kevin Roja, 7 and 5. He's won three straight, trying to get uh, something kick-started at 37 years of age, but it's sort of like an even matchup of an opponent. It's sort of what they call an opponent's fight. Well, it's great. You know why? Guys, it's like I said, where does the opponents go? The opponent graveyard? You know, after they lose <laughs> to upcoming fighters, you know? It's like, so this gives opportunity for two guys that are professional opponents to get in there and try to improve their record against right. another opponent. So, and a lot of people don't realize, you know, they, they say, oh, these guys are opponents. Opponents have a lot of skill. They just happen to be in with tougher guys all the time. The wrong stick sometimes. I mean, some guys happen to have the first few fights match up Reddick Bo and Michael Bent and, and Mike Tyson, you know, and they become opponents all or something out of nowhere. Welcome to the opponent graveyard. Opponent graveyard, you know <laughs> I mean? Hey, where do you go after you get like, like, I mean, look at Bradley Rome, okay? He's got six wins, but he got 15 losses. I mean, exactly. He ain't even in the 50-50 mark no more, you know? As they say, the 500 mark in boxing. So he definitely needs a win. Yeah, he lost his last fight. He definitely needs a win. Now we have um, Kevin Rosa, who's 7-5. and five. Okay, 7 wins, Kevin's 5 Kevin's got a three-fight win streak going here against Tony Velasco, Ed Gissendan, and Dave Slaughter. It's sort of like he's on the... Um, what circuit would you call that? The opponent circuit. I'll call it the opponent circuit right now. He's getting closer to the, he's past the 500 mark, so he's two in the positive, right. okay, having seven wins. But, you know, like I said, you know, here he needs another win. I think what it looks like to me is he started off at 238 early in his career in his second pro fight, and he got bigger as he boxed. Well, Kevin, it's important to point out, Rocha started his pro career in 1989, and after four pro fights, only four once between 1990 and 1997. This is sort of his second career from 97 to 99. He's been a 500 fighter since then. He's 3-3. Three and three. Yeah, but he's reached a 302 mark. Okay, he reached 290, 281, 282, 283. So he's losing weight, and he's getting a little bit. It's in the last three fights he's won. I would have sold when he reached 302. Yeah, I'll tell you, you know, hey, maybe the weight's restricting him. You never know. <laughs> anyway, coming in tonight at 273, Brad Rohn, 225. Rohn's in the black with the gold stripes. Rozier in the black with the white stripe. Referee Dale Grable, sort of inconspicuous at this point. There's not too much technical ability here. You can see it's not a lot of boxing, clean boxing, as we would call it. Um, no man utilizing a jab. No. But anyway, a very interesting feeling out first round uh, for Rozier and Rome. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, tonight we have a competition, the Soaring Eagle Ultimate Ring Girl competition. And our contestant number one, she hails from the Wind, Michigan. How about it for Janae Rushing? How you feel? Yeah, I feel like I'm going away. I put him there. Right, this is awkward. I know. I don't talk to him more than I'm right, Don't talk. Listen, just keep moving. Stick to the move, you know. Just make it work. Just keep that in the That jab is scoring, Kevin. That jab is scoring. Double up on it. Get that hook in off that jab if you can. Nice straight right. He snapped his head a couple of times with that. Showing up on your hook, there, but you throw your punches too. They got to give us his back. He's charging in. He don't want to fight, man. He's not going to fight. Round number two of a scheduled four-rounder. Arnie Tokyo Rosenthal along with Kevin Kelly. We've got Kevin Rozier and Brad Roan. Interesting first round. In between rounds, Rozier's coming to tell him, your jab's working, people rolling the jab. Get the jab, big uppercut. That was a strange punch. He hit him. He, he kind of was covering up. And the uppercut landed, and then he kind of like realized, oh wow, that hurt. Well, so, Kevin, you know, you pointed out though, stop, first round, guys are not what you'd call heavily skillful boxes, and punches are coming from all weird angles. The footwork's all cross, crisscross. That nobody's actually on the balance. They're crossing their feet. They're doing. They're not technically sound as far as boxers. Uh, fighters 
Yes. Boxes, no. Uh, they're not using any boxing technique here. It's actually a little bit cleaner than a street fight. 50-pound weight advantage for Rozier, who's in the black shorts with the white stripe. Roan working the body a little bit right now. Landed that good uppercut earlier. He's in the black and gold. Dale Grable breaks the fighters. Rose is just walking in, using his weight to his advantage. Um, he's going to be cracking his feet when he walks in. I mean, you ain't going to have much technical skill, skill with these two guys here. Um, actually, it's an even matchup. To tell you the truth, it's an even matchup. Because how, how about a new set on the explosion called just for opponents? Opponent graveyard. What about that? The heck, graveyard, the graveyard explosion. What about that? <laughs> Eric Botch is ready to throw something our matchmaker has. Yeah. <laughs> but he was the one who said to me last night. Last night at dinner, he said, these are two guys that both come in here tonight for the crowd of the first night. It's an even match. Except for the 50 pounds that Rozier's got over Rome. Well, I'll tell you, the 50 pounds can work to an advantage on the break. Watch the advantage. It's a four-round fight. Like I said, it gets to the third round. Maybe Rozier might get a little more fatigued, a little more tired. Carrying the extra, extra work around. Rozier's last fight was January this year. He stopped Dave Slaughter in four rounds. He also went eight rounds in October of 98, Kevin. So he's, he's been going some distant fights. And Roan went eight rounds in his last fight, losing the, uh, the eight-round decision to Troy Weider. That was in May of this year. So they got some double got durable chins, it looks like. And, um, you know, but like I said, right now, I think it depends on who hits who with the clean and the shot. This year, having just fought last month, this is his fifth start of 1999. Roan is actually getting to Rose. I mean, he's he's landing. He's having a good shots. round. A very good. Round. I gave the first round to Rose, but this is all Brad Roan here in round number two. So did I, Arnie. I gotta say, two, 100 percent correct. I gave the first round. To Rose. Uh oh, we're agreeing on the scoring, Kevin. We're in trouble. <laughs> Rozier. And actually, you know, we had said earlier that, you know, punches were coming from strange angles, but that was really set up by a nice two-punch combination before he threw the uppercut. Actually, maybe he does have some skills that we don't know. About. Maybe he's improving. Some guys decide late in their career, you know, I can fight. Round number three, this is scheduled for four. Very good second round. For Brad Roan, who came in tonight with a 6 and 15 record, two draws, only two wins by way of knockout. And based on that uppercut he threw at Rozier last round, Kevin, I'm, I'm surprised he's only got two knockouts. That was a nice punch. Nice punch, clean punch. But like I said, we got two guys here that uh, have been beaten before by every knockout. So, like I said, they didn't like to change the concrete, but it, they, 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 are, they are something to get a hit with good shots and getting hurt. So, right now, Roan is right now is actually having his way with Rozier. Rozier, 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 Rozier. Said he's, getting, he's gotten heavy in his career, even though we look at his record and say, well, you know, he reached out to the 0 mark. And he's lost a little bit of it. That, that's, a, that's better than a perfect bowling score. The Rona put the perspective you said about their chin. Rona's been stopped seven times in his career. And uh, Rosier has been stopped five times, all five of his losses. The good news is Rosier's never lost the decision. That's the great news. He's only lost by way of knockout. Well, we're four rounds here, and we're the third round now, but a minute 52 left, the clock, and uh, right now they're going back and forth, exchanging punches, one taking one, and taking the other. But right now, Roman seems like a little bit more energetic, maybe because he's carrying a little less weight than Roger is, and uh, that could be to his advantage. Roman started to go southpaw there for a second, threw a right-hand lead, and liked the way his right foot felt in front and left it that way. I guess they're finding out what they like in this fight, what they like doing. I, see a, I think I see a cut on his uh, right eye. That seems good. Cut. It seems like some gloves trickling from there. Maybe you buy one of the punches that Rose comes from. Yeah, I think there is some blood coming from his eye. And uh, Rose, you're looking.
looking very tired already, and it's only the third round. Like I said, that weight could work against him. And I think that the, the little extra luggage he has around the stomach area is uh, slowing him down. That's more than a little luggage, Kevin. That's like a whole set. Yeah, he's got a set, and I set him around him. But, uh, Only the second start at 99 for Kevin Rose. As you mentioned, Rose been very active with uh, this being his fifth start already of 1999. Just fought less than a month ago. Winning an eight-round decision. So, uh, What's weird about this matchup? What's that? If somebody actually gets a knockout in this fight, it'll prove their career. We'll get into this a little bit more next round, but the conditions require that these guys do win once in a while to get a win for four opponents. But we'll see them more as we head round number three in the explosion. Cedric Boswell for one beam. So when you've been in with fighters like that, even though your record's six and fifteen, you're actually a much more experienced and perhaps skillful fighter than a Kevin Rose. Yeah, but what happens is you learn from your losses, and that's exactly what happened to him. He learned from his losses. He learned how to be a better fighter. He learned how to pick up punches. He learned how to, to slip punches. He learned how to box a little bit better. And it's, I think it's showing here. Rose is punching with the inside of his glove, while Rowan is throwing straight punches down the pipe. And you can see the difference in the caliber opposition that they're faced. Rose looks a little bit more opponent worn. Looks a little bit like he actually has a little bit of ability in there. Okay, looking to come out. And eventually, well, come some guys is confident, sometimes it's mentality. Seven years of age, and um, Roan 
needs this. He's got a two-bout new streak going, and at a certain point, they won't even let him be an opponent anymore. Commissions will start to say, sorry, we won't match you with some of these guys that you got the match with before. Well, there's the bell, the final round, and uh, in our Just for Opponents segment, as uh, Kevin and I have aptly renamed tonight's four-rounder between Rozier and Roan. And uh, Kevin, how'd you see the fight? I gave it to Roan, 37-39. Uh, um, I saw it the same way, two, three, and four yeah. for Brad Roan in uh, first round for Kevin Rozier. Well, we took a look. Action from round number four as both guys started to uh, let the punches go a little bit more, although they were very wide punching. But that uppercut seemed to be the Sunday punch from Roan since round number two when he landed that initial one. Uppercut was his key weapon. He kept landing. He relied on it. He didn't do it consistently enough, but he did it enough when it counted. They go to the uppercut again. It was always it was there for him all night long. Every time Roger covered up, Roger never thought about the punches coming underneath. There's those big roundhouse rights, and you, you can see the inexperience of Rozier getting caught with a telegraph punch like that. Like, like I said, maybe those losses help help Roan a little bit, and um, they do help. You know, people don't realize losing and winning, both of them are very helpful to your boxing career. Well, we'll see if the judges saw it the same way we saw it, uh, and if Kevin Rozier's three-mile win streak has come to an end, and if Brad Roan can get off that uh, two-bout losing streak. For a four-rounder, taking an awful long time to get the score sheets. It doesn't take that long to add this up. And uh, referee Dale Grable giving sort of an annoyed look over at the scorer's table as if to say, come on, guys, what's taking so long here? It's only four rounds. You've been tallying it as we go. Oh, you know, it's very strange on this one. That Rosia gaining all this weight, he has a, a beef jerky endorsement on the back of his robe. Maybe, not only does he work there, maybe he owns it and he eats all the beef jerky. It's possible. I will let you talk to him about that. Kevin. Having a food endorsement, that's different. Okay, guys. What, didn't Rocky have that on the back of his uh, yeah, yeah. Robe in the first Balboa fight? Beef jerk, what brand? Jerktown USA. There's not, there's not a jerk better. Well, all right, Michael Buffer will tell us who won this one. Ladies and gentlemen, we go to the scorecards. Jack Richards scores the bout 38-38. He has it even. Dario Chirino scores the bout 39-37. And John Chalk scores it 39-37 for the winner by majority decision, Brad Rohn. All right, in our battle of opponents, Brad Rohn winning a majority decision. Two judges seeing it the way Kevin and I did at 39-37. Other one calling the fight even. Roan improves to seven and 15. Rosia drops down to seven and six on heavyweight explosion. Back live 